You know, usually when you have time to sleep on something or reflect, sometimes you step back and say, hey, maybe I shouldn't have said that. But that's not the case with Elon Musk today. A day has gone by since he broke the internet, calling the commander of the ISS a full-on retard and liar. And he's only doubling down on that sentiment today. That's because Scott Kelly, a former commander of the ISS, talked about Andreas Mogensen, who made that comment about Elon being a liar, and Elon did not like that. He said, says, Andy is one of the most competent, trustworthy, and honest people I've ever met. This rhetoric is beyond the pale, but sadly not surprising. He does not deserve this kind of disrespect. But Elon said, yes, he does. He is an idiot who publicly attacked me despite having no idea what actually happened. By the way, your brother claims to be independent, but is just a dem donor shill. So here's the deal. A lot of people are asking Elon to actually set the record straight and do an interview. In fact, I posted a slew of questions yesterday in case Elon wanted to answer at least one of them. And I'm going to try to get some answers if possible, but it really would be nice to hear the full story. And so if Elon has more that he can tell us, I really hope that he just picks up the mic and does so. So after posting about this yesterday, I had the most views on a video in a span of 24 hours that I've ever had with any video on my channel, including the in-person Elon Musk interview that I did. So you guys are really wanting to hear more about the story and hopefully we get more answers. But in just the past 24 hours, still the news cycle has been very hot and I have some developments about a SpaceX DOJ lawsuit that has been dropped and of course Flight 8, which apparently might be in a matter of days. So I've covered this a bit in the past, but here are the spark notes. The DOJ has apparently dropped a lawfare case against SpaceX. As Mario Nafal writes on X, in a major turnaround, the Department of Justice announced it would dismiss its lawsuit against SpaceX, accusing SpaceX of discriminating against immigrants when hiring. Filed under the Biden administration, the DOJ accused SpaceX of wrongly excluding asylum recipients and refugees from jobs. At the time, Elon explained why it was a ridiculous example of lawfare. Quote, SpaceX was told repeatedly that hiring anyone who was not a permanent resident of the United States would violate international arms trafficking law, which would be a criminal offense. We couldn't even hire Canadian citizens despite Canada being a part of NORAD. This is yet another case of weaponization of the DOJ for political purposes. And after months of legal battles, the DOJ is apparently now dropping the case with prejudice, meaning it can't be reopened. And Elon shared this, saying the Biden administration launched a massive multi-year lawsuit against SpaceX for not hiring asylum seekers, despite the fact that SpaceX is legally barred from hiring non-permanent residents under ITAR because rockets are an advanced weapons technology. Makes sense. In other words, it was both illegal to hire asylum seekers and illegal not to hire asylum seekers, an insane case of lawfare against SpaceX. And this doesn't just apply to SpaceX. I've filmed some full-scale tours inside Relativity Space, as well as Firefly Aerospace, and I had to do a series of back-and-forth edits with both of those companies to make sure that they weren't violating ITAR restrictions. So these rocket companies have to take it seriously, and there are serious penalties if they break the rules. So that happened in the past 24 hours, and some more indications that a Flight 8 happening sooner than later is looking more and more likely. SpaceX hasn't officially announced that Flight 8 is going to happen next week, but we have other signs. So here are some signs pointing to the fact that Flight 8 may take place next week, if not a few days later. The first Indian Ocean NOTAM has been released for Starship Flight 8 for a launch attempt on February 26th. So that's piece of evidence number one, the NOTAM, which is the Notice to Airmen. There's also a new OIS launch advisory that points to no earlier than February 26th, and apparently some road closures are already happening. Apparently, Eddie Trevino Jr., a Cameron County judge, has ordered the closure of Boca Chica Beach and Highway 4 for the purpose of protecting public health and safety during SpaceX flight testing activities on February 26th and in the alternative on February 27th or February 28th. 
Should SpaceX not complete its planned flight testing activity on February 26th, then SpaceX may use the alternate dates to complete its testing activities. Which means that I may be driving down to Boca Chica unexpectedly and much sooner than I was thinking I would have to next week. Now, of course, we're still waiting for SpaceX to announce this and to make a placeholder on their website for Flight 8 like they normally do. But all of these signs are pointing to it being more and more likely, plus an amazing forecast for next week as well. But the other reason I wanted to make this update is because we have some new information about Starship Flight 9, and it looks like it will be going orbital and, more importantly, returning to the launch site. So an FCC document notes that Starship Flight 9 after so an FCC document notes that Starship Flight 9 after this upcoming launch Flight 8 will have the option of the ship returning to the launch site for a catch. The ship everyone. We've had the booster catch twice now, but we've never had a ship catch and this will be truly incredible if they're able to pull it off. Now this is still unconfirmed by SpaceX, but Flight 9 has the potential of reflying booster 14 with ship 30 and both returning to the launch site with booster returning to pad A and ship returning to pad B. By the way, just another fun shout out to SpaceX. Apparently Falcon has completed its 400 50th mission, which is absolutely crazy. And SpaceX is on track to complete 500 launches in May. So is SpaceX leading the industry? You tell me. And finally, I wanted to give you a little bit more context about Elon Musk's statement yesterday about the ISS being deorbited sooner than later. Eric Berger, the author of Liftoff and Reentry and the senior editor at Ars Technica, gives us some great insights and some context as to why this is unexpected and why it may be a good or even bad idea. So as you remember, Elon Musk said yesterday that the International Space Station should be deorbited, quote, as soon as possible. But this is not a simple task and could have some pretty big implications. Considering that Elon has so much influence with President Trump right now, this actually may happen. Elon said, quote, it is time to begin preparations for deorbiting the space station. It has served its purpose. There is very little incremental utility. Let's go to Mars. Which a lot of people are saying that Elon Musk is just reacting out of anger and that he was triggered that Andreas Mogensen called him a liar. And of course, Andreas Mogensen is the ISS commander right now. So this is uh, maybe payback. But if we look in history, we know that last year in July, NASA awarded SpaceX an $843 million contract to modify a Dragon spacecraft to serve as a propulsive vehicle to safely guide the ISS, this aging space station, into the Pacific Ocean in 2030. So we've known for a long time now that the expiration date of the ISS was coming soon and that its life would be ended soon. However, there's been a lot of public outcry to just boost and raise the ISS to keep it as a permanent maybe museum in a higher orbit. A lot of people are really mad that it's just going to be brought down in the Pacific Ocean and not preserved. And that is an entirely different rabbit hole to go down and it would have different costs and consequences. But right now, the plan is to bring it down safely to the Pacific Ocean, and NASA is going to use SpaceX to do that. So Eric asked Elon after he made the statement if Elon meant that NASA and the U.S. government should commit to the 2030 end of life date or if he wanted to accelerate the timeline for the station's demise. Elon said the decision is up to the president, but my recommendation is as soon as possible. I recommend two years from now. So if Elon wants the space station down in early 2027, I think he probably could get his way. But what are the consequences of this? Well, President Trump could say, yes, let's shut down the space station and bring it down earlier in 2027. But the budget for the deorbit vehicle, which is absolutely necessary, otherwise the station might make an uncontrolled reentry over land and we don't want another Skylab, that deorbit vehicle must be funded by Congress. Right now, the space station has some key supporters in Congress, including Senator Ted Cruz. 
who's out of Texas, and Texas manages the orbiting laboratory. And Eric says that one of his key sources said Cruz was furious with the sentiment from Musk. Eric also postulates that this tweet from Elon Musk could make the confirmation of private astronaut Jared Isaacman to become NASA's administrator more difficult. Many of you know Jared Isaacman is going to be the replacement to Bill Nelson, but he's still not confirmed yet, and he's due to begin meetings with U.S. senators in the coming week. Not only will he have to answer questions about the fate of SLS, but now he'll obviously have to talk about the end of life for the space station, and depending on his answers, it could get difficult. That's because, as Eric points out, Ted Cruz is the chairman of the U.S. Senate Committee on Commerce, Science, and Transportation, and could effectively have control over Isaacman's confirmation process. Ted Cruz was also just re-elected to a six-year term. This could mean that he's immune from some of that political pressure from the White House. But NASA and many of the international partners want to keep the space station operating until at least 2030. So what will replace the ISS? Well, NASA's plan is to transition operations to private space stations in low Earth orbit. These will be called commercial LEO destinations. But will these private companies be able to operate facilities in space by or before 2030? I guess time will tell. For example, Vast is working with SpaceX and is one step closer to launching its first private commercial space station. But here's another reason why Elon and President Trump may want to deorbit the ISS early. And what does it always boil down to? Money. NASA's annual budget for the International Space Station is a little more than $3 billion. More than half of that money is spent on transportation, which is cargo and crew supply missions. In 2023, NASA spent $1.76 billion on transportation to the station, the majority of which went to SpaceX for its Dragon cargo and crew flights. Canceling NASA's operations in low Earth orbit could free up funding for Mars if Ted Cruz and other ISS supporters in Congress agree. But will that really even happen? So I want to know what you guys think in the comments about this statement. I really think that Elon has a lot of influence with President Trump right now. And so if he wants it to happen, I think he could easily persuade President Trump. But is it a good idea? Let me know what you think in the comments. And thank you to all of the new viewers on my channel. I'm a full-time space YouTuber. I quit my job in TV news to do this full-time. And I'm really glad to see the viewership and the support. So thanks so much for watching Ellie in Space. I'll see you in the next video.